আসসালামু আলাইকুম বিরতির পর আবার আমরা ফিরে এলাম ফিরে এলাম চ্যারিটি ইন প্রোগ্রেস অনুষ্ঠানে যেখানে আমরা আজকে কথা বলছি ক্যাপ ফাউন্ডেশনের সঙ্গে কমিউনিটি এগেনস্ট পভার্টি আমরা তাদের কাছ থেকে জানার চেষ্টা করছি তারা বিগত দিনে কি কি প্রজেক্টের সাথে যুক্ত ছিলেন এবং তাদের কাছ থেকে শুনেছি তারা রোহিঙ্গা কমিউনিটির সাথে কীরকম কাজ করেছেন তাই কাছ থেকে এটাও শুনেছি তারা বিভিন্ন ধরনের একাডেমির সাথে যুক্ত হচ্ছেন এবং প্রথম মসজিদ তারাও এস্টাবলিশ করার চেষ্টা করছেন এবং স্পেশালি যখন তাদের কাছ থেকে শুনলাম আমরা রোহিঙ্গা কমিউনিটির মা বোনরা কীরকম সাফার করছেন এবং তারা কীরকম সাহায্য সহায়তা করে যাচ্ছেন এবং এই সব আপনাদের দেয়া ডোনেশনের মাধ্যমে এই সেগমেন্টে আমরা আরও বিস্তারিতভাবে তার কাছ থেকে জানার চেষ্টা করব যে স্পেশালি যে এন্টারনেটাল ক্লিনিক সম্পর্কে কথা বলা হয়েছে আমরা একটু ধারণা দেওয়ার চেষ্টা করব আর একটু ইন ডিটেল যে এই ক্লিনিকটা কী কী ফেসিলিটি প্রোভাইড করবে এবং এই এখানে যারা মানুষ আসবেন যে স্পেশালি যে পেশেন্টগুলি আসবেন তারা কীরকম সেবা পাবেন এবং তারা কীরকম নিশ্চিত করতে পারবেন হেলথ অ্যান্ড সেফটির রুলস অ্যান্ড রেগুলেশন এই সব বিষয় নিয়ে আমরা আলোচনার চেষ্টা করব তার আগে পরিচয় করে দিয়ে আমার সাথে একজন নতুন অতিথি যোগ দিয়েছেন আই বিন ঠাউল হি ইজ দি ইয়াঙ্গেস্ট ভলেন্টিয়ার অফ ক্যাপ ফাউন্ডেশন ইমরান হক সালাম আলাইকুম থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ ফর জয়নিং এন হ্যাঁ ইউ Great. I'll find out more from you. I've been told you're the youngest volunteer, so I'll find out from you. Uh, well, in fact, if I can find out now from you, in fact, I can see you're very confident on screen and you've got that smile on your face as well. How come you're the most youngest volunteer of CAP Foundation? How, what motivated you to join CAP Foundation? Um, my mum, because she's been working with CAP for a while. So. Okay. So did you join out of your free will or did you listen to your mum? Which one is it? Free will. Out of free will. Okay, fair enough. I'll find out more in detail from you. How are you involved with CAP Foundation and what are you going to do with CAP Foundation? How are you going to volunteer? Um, now, Sister Afia Samad, you were talking about Antinoto Clinic. Um, you talked about different facilities, different projects. If you can shadow some light, especially when, it, when we ask, when these kind of clinics mm -hmm. are being formed, the first question that comes to people's mind is health and safety. Now we have asked, uh, we have heard from uh, Nurbay how the government have very strict rules and regulation and it's for obvious reasons to Absolutely. ensure that the health and safety are given the right priority. Now how do you ensure or how does the foundation ensure that all those safeguards are in place? Now if I, if I, if I make it more easily, for example, do you have qualified doctors yes. from Silet? No. no. It's local no. doctors. No, look, okay. I'm looking at our project. Antino, like I said, antenatal most people might think, it, what is it? It's a maternity clinic okay. providing um, support to pregnant mums. And these women, like I said before, before the break, are victims of sexual harassment, rape victims. Okay. Violence. Okay. So the support will be available for this mum. And um, we have a team of professionals, medical staff. They are local doctors and nurses and midwives and qualified. Thank you. And the, our clinic will, will have delivery facility, aftercare facility. We have five to seven bed place at the moment. Um, we have a medical consultation facility, mm -hmm. a respite room for our medical professionals, and reception and waiting area for other members of patients. Um, during what our team will do is support our moms throughout the pregnancy, okay. giving them antenatal care in respect to looking at the well-being, the lifestyle of the pregnancy, um, supporting them through the trauma of the pregnancy. Because we mustn't forget these women are victims of a rape. A lot of atrocities. Okay? That's atrocity, that's atrocity, and yes. they have been traumatized from Burma, so the support is there available for them through, um, through a psychologist team. Um, we will also support uh, mothers after the birth of the baby through a postnatal um, aftercare where we look at the development of the baby mm -hmm. of the child for the first few days uh, before and the well-being of the mother yeah well-being of the mother before mm -hmm. the, they are discharged back into the camp again okay. if there is any complication they, they will be followed up by a midwife uh, doctors so basically by our medical, medical team yeah. in place? yes and the and medica yes medical treatment is in place they will be followed up aftercare um, in in the camp and within our clinic and in regards to giving them support mentally and psychologically, we have a psychologist in place and that will, they will be supported through a mental health project which is placed in the camp currently running at the moment, supporting this mom in regards to postnatal depression, any trauma they have been mm -hmm. faced. Because you have to understand these women might come across resenting these babies due to the trauma they have faced sexually mm. and been raped. So the support will be available through our volunteers, through our support workers that have been trained, in the antenatal clinic and in the post um, 
mental health clinic, the way we have first aid, uh, they are trained by our psychologist to offer them therapy through counselling and support. Okay. Thank you very much for that elaborate uh, discussion. I think uh, this is one of the things that uh, the CAP Foundation are continuing to do, and we'll find out more a little bit about other projects they're involved with. But before that, the Sister Bilkis Murag, I would like you to share your experience because you mentioned in your in the first segment that you've travelled to Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. Just a brief experience. How did you find the journey? It was a amazing experience, I would say. Um, I left behind my children to travel with the team to see what we've been fundraising for here, who we've been fundraising for, seeing the families that benefited from the shelters, the projects um, such as the sanitation, the water wells. I think for me seeing firsthand mm -hmm. these people, how they were so happy and you know they were just full of dwas and the smiles and the appreciation through their tears just kind of said how appreciated they felt to us for providing, you know, delivering the projects and, and also the people that and donated. Yeah, and that's very true. But one point you did mention that you've left your children behind. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't an easy job. No, so that wasn't. was very challenging in itself. It so you had to leave your children behind just to support the children that are being deprived there. Mm -hmm. And when you see the challenges that they have gone through, what comes to your mind? Because Alhamdulillah, we live in a country where we have access to all the facilities Absolutely. that we want. So how did you see those people when they were coming out of a zone that has been inflicted by a lot of atrocities? Alhamdulillah, I think for us, we take our day-to-day -day life, the privileges that we have, the luxuries that we have for granted. Um, one of the things it did inspire me to do was come back and encourage my children even more mm -hmm. about the importance of valuing things like clean water, the fact that we've got a roof over our head, the fact that, you know... The basic necessities. The, absolutely, mm -hmm. you know, don't waste your food because there's children out there that are not even getting any food at all or no clothes. Simple things in life, you just kind of mm. value and appreciate a little bit more and it's so important that to teach our children these. So my children, alhamdulillah, they're quite young, but they weren't happy about me leaving them behind, but they understood why I was doing it. And for them, they felt proud of me as a mother for doing something like this. So that means there is that habit to inculcate within our children that there is something mm -hmm. called as being involved with charity work, Absolutely. being involved voluntarily, giving your valuable time. So there's a message as a mother, you're sharing it Absolutely. with your children. That's great. Thank you very much for that. Um, Brother Abdul Noor, you have, were involved or you are involved with a lot of field works yes, and especially with the, the recent we have seen in the, on the news that you've been involved with a lot of Rohingya projects with their field works and now when you talked about travelling to those field works, first thing I would like to know, how are the expenses paid? Okay, every brother and sisters that travels with us, we self-fund ourselves. Okay, um, so, so it's self-funded. Self-funded. So nothing comes from the donation? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, that's the policy of CAP Foundation. Any, we take uh, um, volunteers, we take public, we take our management board members. So all those volunteers and the board, mem board members that go from UK, they are self-funded? Self-funded. Okay. Um, from the ticket, uh, the accommodation, food, transport, in between, everything is self-funded. Um, this is, again, as an example, uh, this young chap will be joining us this year. I'll find out from him how he experienced yes. me and how did he um, decide to Decided. join to Bangladesh, but I'll find out from him exclusively. Um, now, you were involved in a lot of projects and you are involved with a lot of Oregon projects and I have been told you were there. You, you've seen everything with your own eyes. Share a little bit of experience for I, our audience who would maybe perhaps only seen it on the news but does not have the experience of how the situation is there. First of all, um, to imagine supporting people out there who are suffering and um, they are very destitute from uh, not receiving food. Some of the families that we supported, they don't have food for the next meal. I mean, if you can a little bit clarify, because people might have a perception they're actually poor. Mm -hmm. We've been hearing a lot in the news that actually not everyone is poor. People have come from affluent family, but because of the situation mm -hmm. there, they have turned into what, what the Cap, needy. What CAP Foundation does, as um, my colleague Abdul Samad has mentioned earlier, we have a great number of volunteers. The volunteers, we in every Upojalas, we have about 10 to 15 volunteers, consist of two teams. One is the research team, one is the inspection team. So they will bring us the findings 
of the uh, from their research and okay. the inspection team will go out there to inspect the findings now cap foundation from the from its start we have only been supporting the most needy people who are in desperate need um, uh, we've been providing a lot of rickshaws, a lot of sewing, ma sewing machine to uh, self-sustain um, themselves. We've uh, launched our mental health project last January. Uh, Alhamdulillah, that's going very well within the uh, SILET divisions. Um, uh, you know, with our education programs, uh, uh, it's all about educating people. Now, the experience, my experience, I, I don't think I haven't missed any um, um, a field trip yet is um, I actually look forward uh, for the next field trip mm -hmm. to take volunteers from this country and give them experience. Are there always new volunteers or the same volunteers? No, there's always um, about 30 to 40 percent are always new volunteers. Okay. So we t what we uh, try to do with uh, uh, we take our experienced volunteers and we invite public uh, volunte uh, new volunteers as well so that they one of the main objective of CAP Foundation is connect uh, um, back to the root. So for the last uh, six years we've been taking volunteers or new uh, public uh, who hasn't been to Bangladesh for five years, ten years, twelve years, seventeen years, twenty-six years and twenty-nine years. So it is an achievement for us as an organization to take those brothers and sisters back to its root and connect them where they where their parents have come from and that actually um, a moment of touch um, to know how the people are living uh, in the villages and how we are living in this country I mean it's, it's, it's a very nicely put even by sister Bilkis uh, that when the young volunteers yeah. physically see with their own eyes the houses that people live there the um, the calamity that they face and the challenges and hardship that they face i think while we living here in britain it does open our eyes and see Absolutely. that and realize how grateful we should be to our creator that we have been blessed with everything here i mean this is uh, this is an inspiration for the new volunteers or the young volunteers mm. to come back to this country right and things think life differently uh, his or her perspective in life would be completely different now uh, he's probably or her uh, she's probably wants to spend a lot of money on food and clothing mm. he uh, they will now think about uh, uh, spending before spending they will think about those moments those experiences they have gone through in Bangladesh and think twice before spending uh, excess money or before making a harsh decision or um, uh, you know uh, giving attitude to all the people you know these yes, are the respect the respect mm. you know it, uh, uh, it brings to them uh, they it's a it's a life changer and alhamdulillah this is this is something um, i have seen other charity organization does is 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 commendable alhamdulillah and we should continue to uh, take our young um, uh, uh, people uh, from yeah, uh, from the community uh, so that it changes their views of life inshallah and then perhaps uh, they might engage to the wider society and spread the message across absolutely i'll absolutely. come back to you abdunur um imran now you did mention your mum motivated you now before i ask a little bit in detail tell me what did you hear from your mum that motivated you to travel to bangladesh that the um, helping people that are in need and people that need more things than we do and seeing how they actually build things for them. Okay, have you ever travelled to Bangladesh before? No. It's the first time then? Yes. Okay, you're looking forward to the experience then? Yes. Okay, so how proud are you when you've been told that you're the youngest volunteer? I'm very proud. Alhamdulillah, that's good. And the other thing I wanted to find out, you know when you're travelling, you're travelling to a country that you've never been before. So that means you'll have a complete new experience. Yes. Do you have any idea what challenges that you might face or what you're going to see or what the reality is? Have you literally done a bit of research or are you going to do it? I'm going to do it. You're now. going to do it. Okay, What's, fine. What are your expectations um, going to Bangladesh? What do you think is going to happen? And what do you think is going to see? You're going to see? People in need and people that need quite a lot of things. <laughs> okay, that, that's a that's very good point. And would you be able to then relate it back to your friends, to your families, what you have seen and the experience that you had and tell them that this is what you have experienced? Is that what you're going to do then? Yes. Great. 
I'll come back to you. Now, Sister Afia Samad, I know you've talked about the clinic and you've talked about both sides. You've talked about the different facilities are there, the how you're providing the care and how those clinics and the professionals are involved with the clinic. Now, as you have yourself traveled to Bangladesh, in few words, if you can share a little bit of experience, I know that some of them could be very challenging, but in short, it's just to make sure that our other, the mothers and sisters that are watching from home, they can understand, somehow they can relate to what actually you experience, in few words. Um, but Sister Bilkis said, it is a difficult challenge. Yes, I left my family behind. and That's the biggest I mean, challenge? Yeah, that's the biggest challenge. Being a housewife, a mother, a full-time working, leaving my family behind, it was a big challenge for me. And um, I wanted to do this for myself, for my sanity. Um, something that I want to do big give back to um, hmm. the community, something for humanity, something for myself I wanted to do. So I took a challenge and I decided to Quick go. Quick question, when you say something for myself, how would you define that? To, uh, to make myself good, for the good... Um, Is it I the calamity that you the see? The calamity, um, I always wanted to be part, uh, in charity. And um, yeah, I wanted to give something back to the community okay. because I thought I was... I, ha I was, I'm grateful to my Lord for what I have and what I have achieved in life. And I thought that it was my turn to give back something, some, something that I do for my Lord, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something, uh, it's a sadaqah, I do it. It's and a I'm, personal satisfaction. It's a, yeah, satisfaction for myself. That and I a have legacy done, that you leave behind. A legacy behind. behind mm. And a role model for my son, for my nephews and nephews. So I they can to follow the same They can step. follow me. Mm. And, you know, charity begins at home and I wanted them to look at what I was doing. I, uh, yeah, it's achievement for myself and it was a challenge. While I was out there, um, it has been challenging. Yes, we had tears, emotional, um, yes, and it was part of teamwork. And it's building relationship within the team, um, going out and seeing the women that are suffering. Mm. Um, you know, the support isn't available and we should be grateful for what we have. The women in, in, empowers you to do more. Um, during my journey in Bangladesh, I mean, it has, it was a difficult year for me. Um, while I was doing the charity, um, I left my elderly father here. I, he mm. passed away while I was there. Well, I can't and it guys. was a difficult journey for me. So I decided to continue with this journey as a Sadhguru Sariya for my dad. Thank you very much. I mean. Yeah. My dear viewers, this is a very important message there. We all have our relatives here. We all have our families here. But yet, at a time when your own family, when you yourself go through certain calamities, it's how you deal with yourself and then how you bring about that change. And you know that you, we all have a goal in our life, but how to make sure that we focus on those goals and make sure that our priorities are right. And this is exactly what we have learned here. Even though some of our closest ones might pass away, but yet that should not stop us from continuing the work that some amazing people are doing. Now, in last few words, Sister Bilkis Murad, because we are coming to the end of the program, in 30 seconds, to my viewers out there, to my, especially to my sisters, my young sisters who are watching, because sometimes they don't want to go or they find it, their life there is very boring, especially in our glamorous world that we live in. Yeah. What word of advice would you have for them that are watching now that you can encourage them to join at least to see with their own eyes and how you can relate that experience for them to engage in such sort of um, events or projects? <laughs> That's a good, good question, actually. Um, I would say is what we see on media isn't always what is a complete picture. You see part of the story. Um, definitely step, take a step outside of the box and if you have the opportunity go out do this you know go out and see the world see the people that live a different life to us see the suffering it actually really broadens your horizon yeah, and the understanding yeah. and and I perhaps I think I, I'll, I'll echo with you there is because there are certain things, unless you experience it, you might not be able to understand the full story. Is that what you meant? Absolutely. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Sister Bilkis Murad. Imran, now there are young people out there watching. In just 20 seconds, what would you say to them, those who are thinking to going to Bangladesh or those who don't want to go to Bangladesh? How would you tell them, what message would you give them, just in 20 seconds? To um, be grateful for what they have 
realise that the people in Bangladesh need things more than them. And Thank you. Thank you. So you're basically engaging the young generation to follow the footsteps of their parents and follow even perhaps uh, you, you said that you have, I've been told that you have your own page that you're fundraising. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So how are you fundraising it then? People um, can choose to give money. Okay. And how can they find you? It's on my mum's page. Yeah. Hey, your mum's page. So you're promoting that. Okay. That's great. Good to know. Continue your good work. And I'm sure that your other friends and families, the young generation that are watching you will, inshallah, continue your footsteps. So keep up the good work. <coughs> Sister Bilkis Murad, last in uh, five seconds, if you can just tell us, okay. how w would you summarize uh, today's discussion? Um, I mean, my, my aim was to come and discuss about the Rohingya um, promoting the antenatal clinic or maternity hospital. And I would urge every sister out there, we know we're all mothers and we've been through um, pregnancy, and I would urge all the sisters out there to come and support us. Look up on our um, CAP Foundation page, we have the page. Please, if you can contribute something towards the hospital, we'd be ever so grateful. Thank you, thank you very much. Now, finally, uh, Abdul Noor, by your final words for today and uh, for the, especially for the project that you're involved in for your upcoming projects as well. Alhamdulillah, thank you, Colonel Bai. First of all, uh, I'd like to uh, praise and thanks, uh, give thanks to all our donors and supporters, uh, <coughs> continuing supporting us uh, and uh, enable us to do this great work in Bangladesh and in other places. Uh, may Allah bless you and may Allah give you best of this life and best of Akhira. Um, inshallah, you will see a lot of work uh, in Rohingya. We are spending three days in Rohingya, and um, we have nine days of field work, mm -hmm. three days in Rohingya, and then the rest of the days uh, in different districts, um, opening our um, uh, academies, mosques, and other places as well. And for more information, how can they find the information? Right. Obviously, as you've been following us on social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We also, you also can able to tap into our website. It's uh, down below, inshallah, and uh, take all the details from there. Okay, so basically you're there on all the social media networks. Absolutely. Um, with this, my dear viewers, we have come to the conclusion of our today's discussion. We have heard from the volunteers of uh, CAP Foundation how they involve, what projects they involve, what with their future, what are their future projects, and how how they have shared the experiences most importantly everyone has got their families behind and especially how the sisters here have left their families behind and gone out to do that extra work inshallah we hope every one of us will continue those hard work and tomorrow there will be another charity in progress at nine o'clock so do stay tuned we'll be inshallah right back with a new organization until we meet again wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh